The Bible begins its story in a land called Eden, a place which was said to be an earthly paradise. But many believe Eden was nothing more than a fairy tale, invented by Jewish writers as part of a fanciful legend. Was Eden a real place, or nothing more than a fantasy? The description of the land of Eden in Genesis 2 is a peculiar one. It mentions a land that would be a lush paradise in an area of the world that today is a vast desert. And yet, God is able to plant a garden that is even watered by a mist that comes up from the ground, so it mentions the lack of need for rain. Even stranger is the author tells us a river flows out of Eden and splits into four other rivers. Two of them are known, the Tigris and the Euphrates, but the other two rivers, the Pishon and the Gihon, don't seem to be actual rivers that float out of the same area. The Gihon River is said to flow around the whole land of Cush. Cush was traditionally understood to be present-day Ethiopia, and we have no evidence of a river which used to flow from Turkey into Ethiopia. We also don't really have any evidence the Tigris and the Euphrates were once one river that split into two. All of these issues have caused many scholars to refer to Eden as a mythical place that didn't actually exist, but was just a fantasy created by the Jewish authors. But perhaps the problem might not be with the actual description of Eden, but where we have been looking and how the passage has been translated. We have to remember the Earth is not static and is always changing. The planet we live on now was not the same 100,000 years ago, let alone 15,000 years ago. In fact, about 14 to 15,000 years ago, the continents were much larger. This was because the polar ice caps contained much more frozen water, which allowed more areas of land to exist that are now covered by vast seas and gulfs. One area in particular is the Persian Gulf, where the Tigris and Euphrates now flow into. However, this was not the case about 14,000 years ago. The geography of prehistoric Sumer was quite different. According to modern satellite imaging, the Tigris and Euphrates used to connect and form one river that went through a habitable land at the bottom of the Persian Gulf. But these were not the only rivers. In fact, there were many other smaller rivers that flowed into this one river as well. One larger river that also drained into this area has been called the Wadi Batin River, which used to run through the land of Arabia. However, in the ancient world, this area was called Havala. This region also shows evidence of vast gold mines, especially in the area called Mud Adaheb. However, the river dried up thousands of years ago, roughly around the same time climate change transformed the region into a desert. But long ago, this would have been a lush river that drained into the same river as the Tigris and Euphrates. Surprisingly, if we go back in time enough, this correlates to the account of the Pishon River flowing into Eden in Genesis 2 quite nicely. Dr. James Hoffmeyer says, a possible candidate for the now defunct Pishon River was discovered with the aid of shuttle imaging radar technology. It evidently flowed east from the mountainous Hejaz region of Saudi Arabia. Dr. Farouk El Baz, the geologist and director of the Center for Remote Sensing at Boston University, discovered traces of its course beneath the sand with ground penetrating radar images from the space shuttle. James Sauer immediately saw the geographical connection between this ancient river and the description of the Pishon River in Genesis 2. This river appears to have dried up sometime late in the third millennium BC. The fact that Genesis 2 knows about this river is remarkable indeed. Of course, what about the alleged Gihon River that allegedly went into Ethiopia? Well, perhaps this is based on a mistranslation. Kenneth Kitchen argues the original Hebrew word without the later additional vowel points can simply be understood to mean the land of the Kaziites, or Kashu, which was in western Iran. Their original homeland appears to have been the Zagros Mountains, 
before they later controlled the area of Babylon, after the old Babylonian Empire fell. Satellite data also reveals a long river that wrapped around the Zagros Mountains that drained into the same river as the other three, which also correlates with the account of the Gihon River in Genesis 2, coming from the land of Cash instead of Cush. So in fact, thanks to modern satellite imaging, we can see at one time, four rivers did flow into one. However, many read the account in Genesis 2 to mean there was one river that split into four. This has caused many to look for Eden in modern day Turkey, but with little success of finding a river that split into four, and two being the Tigris and Euphrates, and another flowing into a place of gold. But as we have noted in our previous video, the Hebrew can be quite ambiguous. The same word is used to refer to the end of something, specifically the end of a long pole. So as Kenneth Kitchen notes, the Hebrew in Genesis 2 can be understood to be referring to a place where four rivers met to form one, instead of one river splitting to form four. As Kitchen says, this is a snapshot type view taken looking out from where the single stream entered the garden and looking back just upstream to the point where the four head rivers came together to form the single stream that entered the garden. So the area beneath the Persian Gulf does correlate nicely with the Genesis account of the land of Eden. Before this area was flooded, four rivers did drain into one, as Genesis might indicate. But there's even more about this area that modern science has revealed. Archaeologist Jeffrey Rose referred to this area as the Gulf Oasis because of its pristine conditions and environment. In other words, the area seems to have been the ideal place for early humans. Jeffrey Rose says, given the extent of the exposed land within the Gulf Basin, the abundance of food, water, lithic raw material, and its conscripted geographic position, this sizable inland depression is thought to have formed one of the most important oases in the ancient world. In other words, the area would have been a paradise for early humans, with abundant food, fresh water, and warm weather. Rose also notes that the area received very little rainfall, only 40 to 120 millimeters per year. However, the area was watered by a rich mosaic of freshwater springs, making this place unlike any other found on Earth today. And yet, it is interesting how well the land of Eden matches this description. John Walton notes the Hebrew language of claiming a mist coming up to water the land might be referring to springs. Given a connection to a Sumerian ID, it would actually be referring to an area being watered by subterranean springs, which still exist under the Gulf today. And we also see four rivers met to form one. One comes from Arabia, where there is evidence of gold, one comes from the original land of the Kaziites, or Kash, and the other two being the Tigris and Euphrates, all met to form one river in an oasis, unlike any other place on Earth, that was watered by freshwater springs and filled with vegetation and abundant sources of food. It is no wonder we have found an abundance of evidence for prehistoric settlements around the Gulf, which later became the cradle of civilization. Unfortunately, we can't visit this region today, because later on, the whole region was flooded, and any evidence of human activity beneath the gulf is now lost. But what is interesting is how well the description of Eden in Genesis correlates with this lost oasis that has only been discovered recently. We have no evidence from ancient Sumer, Babylon, or any other culture from around that region that describes a place like what we find in the Gulf Oasis about 14,000 years ago. Only Genesis 2 has a similar description of a place that was lost long before other ancient cultures began writing down their own histories and mythologies. It seems only the Hebrews preserved the memory of the Gulf Oasis as a land they called Eden. Now obviously this doesn't prove the Bible is true or that God visited man in Eden 
but it does show the description in Genesis 2 seems reliable and probably describes a place that actually existed at one time. Which is astonishing, because this place was probably flooded some 8,000 to 13,000 years ago, and lost to mankind before the advent of writing. Because of this, I would argue the details suggest the account of Eden is much older than the time period of the Babylonian exile, where many scholars want to place it. The account says the garden was in the east, so from the perspective of the author, that would place him west of the garden, and that would place him in the area of Canaan or Egypt. It refers to the land of Arabia as Havilah, which appears to be an older name for the area. Around the time of Solomon, the area became associated with the name Arabia, but not prior to this. It's possibly referring to the land of the Kaziites, being in the Zagros Mountains, which is the most likely place where the Gihon River would have flowed through. So it would have been written down before the Kaziites ruled over the old Babylonian Empire. I'll admit this last piece of data is a little speculative, but the overall description of the land of Eden does seem to be reliably describing an area no other culture wrote about that actually existed thousands of years ago in a place we have only recently uncovered. Therefore, it seems very unlikely this account of Eden was written or copied from mythology during the Babylonian exile, and probably is a reliable oral tradition that was preserved and later written down by the authors of Genesis 2. Thus, the archaeological record does likely suggest that Eden was actually a place that existed long ago, before all was lost to a flood.